what do you do? Stay invested or not? Wow. What a difference a month makes, right? It's just been exactly a month. You know, on 19th of February, we saw the S&P at the all-time highs at 3,400. And today, we are more than 30% lower. Um, I think it's going to be tough. I mean, on one hand, you know, we, we just talked about the bazooka that the ECB has also fired. Uh, you know, today, every month, the ECB now will be buying, you know, over $115 billion uh, euros of, of uh, you know of assets. Um, that's the highest ever, right? So I mean, at, at the peak of the crisis in, in Europe, you know, they were buying 80 billion a month, and now it's 115 billion. Um, and, and you know, in spite of that, the market's a lot lower. So I would say, on one hand, there will be a lot of liquidity in the system. Um, you know, a lot of uh, you know, you want to call it helicopter money or or handouts uh, that need to be made. Um, you know, just to, to keep the lights on, right? Because in the consumption and a demand uh, destruction, um, you know, jobs will be lost. Uh, and so as a result, handouts all across the world, uh, you know, basically helicopter money uh, will kick in. Uh, but at the same time, because this is a health crisis and there's a massive lack of confidence, the, the spending will be lacking, the investments will be lacking. So people will be sitting on a lot of cash um, until the, uh, I would say, the, the virus situation settles down. Um, you know, but Denny, I think on you, that... Denny, Denny, you talk about uh, the bazookas, everything and the kitchen sink, yet we see tumble after tumble. I mean, how much risk has been priced in, given the fact that we're facing a recession and uh, basically everybody has run out of ammunition? Uh, absolutely. I, I think maybe where the, the next, uh, where there could be more ammo <laughs> would be if the central banks or, or the treasury, um, you know, starts buying equities as well. Um, you know, it's not in the mandate at the moment uh, for, for the Fed, but it, it could be uh, if it comes to a point of, of you know, an emergency. Um, but then there will be essentially, you know, over time nationalizing the entire stock market, right, which I don't think is... is good for uh, the financial system either. Um, so whilst the kitchen sink is thrown in, I, I think now it's more a matter of, um, you know, how does confidence come back? You know, where everyone is scared and worried about their lives and their health and, and staying home. Um, you know, but at the same time, maybe, you know, I, I think it, it was fortunate for us out here in Asia, you know, having um, you know, live through and watch the the virus, um, you know, in the first phases, right, in China and then as well as Singapore and other parts of Asia. You know, and I think that playbook, you know, life eventually does go back to normal, right? So, you know, it, there'll be a moment of peak fear where, it, you know, the transmissions are, go exponential. Uh, and then, you know, there will be the, the actions where, you know, the home quarantines and, you know, essentially working very aggressively to contain the spread. And when that happens, you know, yeah. in, based on our studies, about 30 days after, um, you know, basically virus uh, transmissions go exponential, things start to calm down. Uh, and I think that that will start to happen uh, in Europe by the end of March or early April. Uh, and for the U.S., it should be about middle of April to, to the end of April. Um, so I think we'll get there, right? So once the people start to go back out, you know, life needs to go back on, everyone you know, basically, it goes like stir crazy, you know, with, yeah. with Kevin. Um, and, and then I think then things will start to settle, right? So it's not so much about bazooka or liquidity. I think that is just to hopefully keep businesses afloat, um, you know, for a couple yeah. of months. Um, but then Danny, we need people back to work and spend. Danny, it's, it's Yvonne in Hong Kong. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, what are your clients telling you now? Have you seen any withdrawals? Um, not yet. Uh, I would say clients, um, again, I think, you know, it, it's fortunate that our fund tends to do well in volatile situations. Um, in fact, when I was sitting at your offices, uh, you know, in December of this year, we were exactly calling for investors to own, you know, tails and own volatility that, that you know, we felt that the markets were too complacent, um, that a big tail event, you know, was overdue. Um, and so to, to me, I would say that we have provided a, a, a decent hedge for clients. Uh, but at the same time, 
it feels to me that the longer term investors um, have not capitulated. Uh, so I would say mm. the fast money, you know, the alternative funds, you know, some of the, the CTAs and algos have capitulated. Um, as well as some retail investors and high net worth. But I would say the longer term pension funds still um, are in the camp, and, and, and rightly so, that, that we should look through this crisis, you know, for the next three to six months. But it will be scary, right? Because you will start to see earnings fall off a cliff, right? So, you know, it takes a leap of faith and confidence yeah. that, that you can ignore, you know, basically an earnings recession of, of 50 to, to 90% for some companies, right? Yeah. So, so. Um, for now, investors are still longer term investors are, are still, um, you know, uh, standing pat. Okay, so longer term investors are still there, but you know, in, in the next coming weeks or months, as you're forecasting, perhaps things will start peaking when it comes to the number of infection cases. Are we likely to see more disruption in the hedge fund industry, where we'll see more funds have to liquidate this quarter? Um, I think there will be some liquidation, and and in fact, you know, part of the reason this, this uh, I'll say the, the next wave of the sell-off, right, it coincided with um, the Saudi Russia uh, basically oil, um, you know, disagreement leading to oil prices falling 30 percent, and as a result, you know, some maybe uh, you know sovereign wealth funds actually needing to shore up their reserves and hence putting in redemptions. Uh, but at the same time, I, I think you know we've had this um, almost perfect period of 10 years where passive investment, you know, looked like it could do no wrong, right? Where investors just felt, you know, I'll just pay this 10 basis points and be long and I don't need hedge funds. I think maybe this period could be a reminder that, you know, that there is still a place uh, for active managers in the portfolio, you know, because, you know, every so often uh, we do have these massive flash crashes uh, and they will still uh, recur, you know, in the years ahead. Uh, Danny, how does your portfolio look right now? And how are you hedging the tails? Um, I think the tails have already played out. Um, but at the same time, I, I believe that countries that are very dependent on exports, you know, twin deficit countries, you know, countries that run uh, a fiscal deficit, uh, you know, as well as a trade deficit, um, will face continued pressures on their currency. Um, you know, when, you know, as, as countries like, like Australia, New Zealand, you know, basically every country is rolling out massive uh, stimulus, um, you know, some, they, they have to fund this, uh, you know, basically it puts them into a much more um, precarious situation from a fiscal front, right? So the deficit countries go into deeper deficit and, and therefore, you know, flooding the market with liquidity, but at the same time putting their fiscal situation in a, in a much worse situation. So to me, I, I think the trend towards continued weaker um, Asian currencies uh, will uh, continue to play out in the next six months. The question is, what do you sure. go long? So if you short Aussie and, and Korea, you know, Thailand, uh, you know, Indian rupee, Indonesian uh, rupee, you know, it, it, to some extent the renminbi as well, but what's on the long side? I mean, at the moment, the dollar has outperformed. But I feel strongly yeah. that the next wave, um, the dollar will pause and gold should hit higher. Right? And we need to take a step Danny. back. And, and, and I think we need to see that this is massive QE, larger than we've ever seen in the last 12 years. And in this situation, when growth you know, is going through, uh, the world is going through a recession, you need to be long gold.